Hello and welcome to the In the Paint podcast where we talk about NBA and modern day basketball. I am Alec Gagnon, joined here by my co-host, Matthias Magna. Hello. What are your thoughts on Paul George this season? Well, Paul George is an amazing player. And this season he's just incredible. His clutch shots and everything. And game-changing plays, you, you, you can say. Yeah, especially with that overtime forcer really recently against the Mavericks. Unfortunately, they lost that game, but it really just shows, like, Paul George really is a franchise player. And, you know, people started to doubt it, doubt him recently. But he really came back and forced this season. Um, and he's really helping the Clippers this season, even with Kawhi's injury. So they're really a contender this year, which is pretty impressive with the fact that their best player is out. I think he's entirely underrated. He deserves a, a bigger name in the NBA, and I think that's what he's getting right now. He's currently at the third spot uh, in scoring this year, uh, around 27, just under Stephen Curry. And uh, I think it was Giannis, perhaps. But could he be in an Hall of Fame player? That's a good question. What What would you think? Mm, maybe not yet. Maybe next season, if if he does the same as this season, probably. But still, so he's not as good as Michael Jordan, LeBron, even Stephen Curry, and all those amazing players. Yeah, for sure. But like he has been contending for the MVP. Uh, multiple times actually, but he just never seems to get there. Like uh, especially in those like last few years with OKC, everybody was thinking he was the best, and then suddenly everybody hated him. He was like not clutch, you know. Performed didn't didn't perform well in in the uh, in the playoffs with the Clippers, and it kind of seemed like him and Kawhi didn't mesh well. But I think their team is starting to come together, and now that Paul George just has that like solo time to lead the team he's kind of finding himself in LA and he's you know he's finding his groove once again but now what about the Lakers okay the so Lakers this is a huge huge topic this season so I mean there's just so much to say like what what are your thoughts so far this season they're not that great. They're making a lot of mistakes. Even, well, do you think us, our team, could beat them? E. Yeah. Because because they're making a lot of basic mistakes huh? in in the league. And... Yes. Obviously, it's a little hard to compare uh, our junior team to a professional team, but yeah. it shows that um, they really don't know how to take care of the ball. Like I think they're. They're pretty high in turnovers per game uh, as a team. And I think, you know, I don't want to completely pin down a player, but it shows that Russell Westbrook really is making a difference, but it seems to be more detrimental uh, than beneficial to the team. Um, but, yeah, they have a stacked lineup. Like, who is it? Like uh, Anthony Davis, yeah, LeBron James, LeBron, Russell. Russell Westbrook. They've got Dwight Howard. Is Rajon on there? Uh, yeah, Rajon Rondo. I think he's still there. I can check that, but... And I th- is Anthony Davis as good as last year? That's I another thing think, uh... that might be why um Lakers are having a, a really bad start to the season. So, this is just the big question. Is this just a rough start? Are they, like, patching it up right now? Or is this just a complete bust of a team? Because, you know, just everything's going wrong right now. Like... They're losing to the to the worst teams in the league, uh, and they spent so much money on all these players, but they don't seem to be meshing well together. Maybe they just have to wait till Russell Westbrook finds his groove in L.A. Because obviously he wants to be there with AD and LeBron, but you know he's just not playing his best right now, and but, it kind of sucks. But did Russell Westbrook brought that like, rough start of the season, or is just their team in general? To how they play That's and build the ball. Because you can't completely pin it down on Russell Westbrook either, it seems like. LeBron isn't having a fantastic season either. Um, and everything is really just... It's just piling on top of each other right now. But I remember Westbrook doing an, an incredible passing play from, like, full court. 
Yeah. Dude. Russell Westbrook, <laughs> one thing, though, is that he's he's always going to be having, you know, averaging eight eight rebounds and some crazy stuff, like eight rebounds, eight assists, and almost a triple-double, like usual. He's just an explosive player. But now nah, the problem is he's almost doing a quadruple double with the amount of turnovers per game he causes, <laughs> which is just, I mean, like... I think this is his worst season in turnovers, and he's always had to struggle with that. They just need to, you know, handle the ball better. And Another thing that was brought up before the season started, after they spent all this money in free agency for all these players, is that everybody was just saying, like, yeah, they have a good team, they have a stacked lineup, but they have no shooters. And I think that's kind of true. Also, for for the Raptors, they are, like, all-star player just player that everybody knows, but they're a really good team. Like, yeah. Van Vliet, Siakam, they are still there. They're still playing good. I think the, the the thing with the Raptors is that they don't have a very... They don't have one superstar player. Yeah. They have... I wouldn't say average, but they have a lot of people along the same skill level. Um, other than, you know... You two know, good all star players and players. and bunch of random like rookies. And, Pascal Siakam. and the the cool part is I don't think either of them have reached their full potential either. And uh like we've seen before from Pascal Siakam, he can have a better season than this year, but not to mean that he's having a bad season right now. I think the Raptors have this, this sort of grit and determination to them that can you know, you never know if they'll lose or win, you know. Yeah, they They'll lose to a really good team, but they have that little factor that, yeah, maybe they could beat this team too. For the neurals, would it affect the Lakers too? Like, their softness? Would it be it more could. soft? Because that's just the big meme, right? That LeBron is this, this, this soft guy. Yeah. And that's always what comes up in the GOAT conversation is like, is LeBron the GOAT? And everybody's like, no, he didn't play tough like Michael Jordan or whatever. He wasn't, like, smacked in the face like MJ. But it's just because of, of the new rules, too. Yeah, the new rules are definitely a game changer. They're a really big game changer. Because you see guys like James Harden and Trey Young. Less Trey Young, though, because Trey Young knows how to adapt, I feel, a little bit more. And he's the best player on his team, unlike James Harden. But James Harden, he's, you know, he's not getting those silly little foul calls anymore where he just yeah. draw a foul all the time. Now defense, defensive players have more liberty, and I think I think that's really good. I think it, it helps our game because, yeah, we need to look more on the fouls of this game and make it not as rough, but we, we still need to be able to play defense because sometimes those calls that were called on James Harden every time he took a three-point shot, yeah, and and he just fell on on the ground yeah. and ten fouls or whatever. Yeah, he w- he was shooting the most uh, foul shots. Like he was sh- basically shooting more foul shots than the opposing team. <laughs> so obviously the the Nets would win more than lose, but they're not having a great season this year. I think they can turn it around, but it's definitely hard with one of their and, stars being gone. But well, they have Blake Griffin, Andrew Drummond, I think. Yeah. Kevin Durant, Kyrie. Yeah. Although Kyrie isn't playing this year, but more on that later. Mm. Um, but yeah, the new rules, definitely game-changing. But I don't know everything, but was it intentional, like, hit from LeBron? Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen that clip enough. I don't know, I haven't seen it too much, but, um, you know, there's there's always that one little snapshot of Isaiah Stewart's face all bloody and red, like, it's definitely very gory. Um, it's not really something you want to see from the NBA, you know, just grown men fighting like that. But obviously, emotions can be really tough in the midst of a game like that. A lot of people are putting the, the blame mainly on LeBron right now. Or I might be completely wrong about that. But I think, obviously, the, the blame is on both of them. But... It may have been intentional from LeBron, but the way Isaiah Stewart just, like, he was getting held back 
and then he was like, yeah, I'm cool, I'm cool. And then he started rushing right back yeah. to the run. Like, that's, you, you can't do that. Like, it's kind of just violent at that point. And obviously they both got ejected. He just made it worse for for uh, for him. Just it's just that it's just that LeBron could have get a a foul and maybe him could have get ejected, mm-hmm. and not Isaiah Stewart. But just by saying he's cool and running and rushing back at LeBron, it just made it worse. Uh, but the Lakers did win that game. Yeah, and- but that's kind of expected. But it was a pretty close game after. Uh- Isaiah Stewart and LeBron got taken out of that game. What happened with Kyrie Irving? Is he still injured? No, no, no. So Kyrie oh, just because of the vaccine? Yeah, so this is a really... Also, a- another really, really big topic to talk about. So Kyrie Irving, like like many other um, uh, athletes or around the world, uh, are is refusing to take the vaccine, and because of the vaccine mandate in uh, New York, he cannot play in any of the the games for uh, for Brooklyn in New York without the vaccine. Uh, so he decided just to skip out on the season entirely. So he hasn't played a game. He's losing millions and millions of dollars. Uh, but I don't think because of that, the like rule is going to change about taking the vaccine. Yeah, I think. I think, you know, he, he's not. It's important as a pro athlete that kids. And you know, just people look up to that you set the the right example. Yeah. And obviously, this is what he feels. This is what he thinks. But yeah, he he, he probably influenced a lot of people to yeah. not get the vaccine, and now more COVID, more yeah. everything. It just and it's not, not the just best. Kyrie thing. Irving either. Like, there's there's like another big one is um, Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers. And that's a big, really controversial one where he lied about taking the vaccine and then tested positive for COVID, I believe. So, you know, it's it's unfortunate, really, that these these guys are acting this way. But also, you know, like for the Nets, that's, that's, that really is impacting their season, too, because without Kyrie, they are playing worse. But I think it's better that he isn't playing if he's not. Uh, vaccinated. But what was the most like influential basketball shoot? Was it like the Allen Iverson? The, maybe some Kobe? Yeah, some Kobe's were pretty influential, uh, especially with what you see right now. But I think just the most impactful is easily the Pro Tro Six. No, 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 not even going through the Kobe line. Going back to the '90s with the with the well, actually the '80s with the with the MJ Air Jordan ones. Yeah. I mean, where else do you see a shoe so impactful that is worn on and off the court than with the? Yeah, it's, it's just like sneaker now. Yeah, and obviously, when Michael Jordan got that signature line, I think signature lines just became that much more popular. Yeah. Because me, I just didn't even know there were Clay Thompson shoes. Yeah. And and now there's just a lot of signature yeah. lines. Now it just feels like everybody in the league has a, has their own pair of sneakers. And it's kind of exciting because you get to see through all that. And, you know, for all the sneakerheads out there, I know that's something you really like to look into. Especially myself. I love looking into basketball shoes and just sneakers in general. And just maybe you could play... And some basketball shoes from your favorite player too. Yeah. You could just feel like I don't know you're Kevin Durant playing in those. Yeah. Or LeBron James. Thank you for listening to the in the paint segment of the Mike Bexidi podcast.